guys! Today I'm going to be doing the Norse Mythology book tag in honor of Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead coming out October 3rd. Which, if I'm uploading this when I'm supposed to, is tomorrow. This tag was created by Kira's library and I will leave a link to her blog in the description box below. I was going to create my own tag but she has some really good questions to go with a majority of the Norse gods. Though I did come up with a few questions myself to go along with some Magnus Chase characters. This is going to be an extremely long tag so let's just jump into it. First up is Odin, favorite standalone. This one took me longer than expected because I didn't think I actually had a lot of favorite standalones until I was looking on Goodreads and then I was like, oh, that's a lot of books. In the end, I ended up choosing The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I love the writing and the plot and the characters and pretty much everything about this book. Next is Thor, a book that hit you in the feels. And this one was pretty easy for me. Illumine. I cried through the majority of this book, mainly because of a certain twisted computer telling a selfish, selfish lie. But it still hit me right in the feels and just thinking about what happened and not knowing the truth just huh, makes me want to cry. Or go through the book and punch the computer in its hard drive. Loki, by far my favorite Norse god, is a book plot twist or character betrayal. Now, the only book character betrayals I could think of didn't really surprise me. So I'm going to go with biggest plot twist and the first one that came to mind was the last, the ending plot twist of the Eye of Mines. Yes, all the books ended with a freaking plot twist, but this one was the plot twist that ended all plot twists. I can sometimes see a plot twist coming. It at least hints at it and I guess this book kind of did too, but I guess the possibility of this plot twist happening just didn't seem believable. It's still not believable. I still can't believe what happened. This book mentally twisted me, guys, which means it goes perfect with Loki. Next is Frigg, your OTP. I think for this one, I'm going to go with both Malik and Gemma because I love both those couples so, so much. This one just stresses me out more, so I think there's going to be a bigger feeling of, I guess, accomplishment when they finally get together. Kind of like when Jason Clary had that whole brother-sister thing going on in the Mortal Instruments series. Still have no clue how they're going to make this relationship work, but I trust Cassandra to not break our hearts into millions of pieces again, which probably shouldn't trust her with that after the ending of Lord of Shadows, but I really don't have a choice. Hemendal, favorite second book in a series. Gemini, because I love this book so freaking much. I normally wouldn't think to reread book series, especially not right away, but as soon as I finished Illuminae, I wanted to reread it. And the same thing with Gemini. It's been, what, a, m a month since I finished this book, and I still want to reread it. I just want to listen to it on repeat over and over again. Okay, no singing. Let's move on. Balder, your favorite male character. Obviously, I'm going to go with the sass master. Percy Jackson. Sif, most beautiful book cover. Truthfully, I have a lot of favorite book covers, but I think More Happy Than Not is one of those book covers that I'm always going to want to display on my shelf so everybody can see it. It's just so beautiful. Truthfully, all of Adam Silvera's book covers that I've seen so far have been beautiful. He's gotten really lucky with book covers. Frey, a book or series that makes you happy. I don't know if it's considered cheating to go with the manga for a couple of these questions, but I couldn't think of a book series that made me happy without it being a contemporary or making me cry my eyes out before it got happy. So I'm going with Haiku by Hiruchi Furudate, and I probably said his name wrong. I don't know. All I know is the main character of this series makes me so, so happy because he's just so energetic and cute and it's just, it's hard not to love him. You guys will probably see the extent of my love for this series in my next book haul because I went a little crazy. Freya, favorite book setting. Of course, with this one, I had to go with Hogwarts. That's the one fictional place I would always want to go. Trey, I think I'm saying that right. Favorite book with a big upheaval slash epic fight scene. 
I truthfully couldn't think of many fight scenes that would be considered my favorite. Truthfully, when I'm reading big fight scenes, I mean, I they usually just cause me anxiety or I don't pay attention to them or they go by so fast. Like the one in Blood of Olympus, it's just like you blink your eyes and it's gone. But there is an epic hollow fight in Library of Souls that I would say counts as a very epic battle. Euler, a character death that affected you the most. I am not going to say what character death affected me the most because the movie is about to come out, but if you want to know what character death I'm talking about, turn to page 250. Seriously guys, my heart, it doesn't even feel like it's a part of my body when I think about the character death in this book. I don't know how to say this god's name. Now, Jord sounds weird. Don't know how else you could say that. They were book an epic journey on water slash ocean setting. That's worded very odd. But basically, a journey that's taken place on water. And this is the only book series I could think of that actually had like the majority of the journey take place either on or near water. So this was what I had to go with. I'll probably think of two or three other series after I film this video. Valkyrie, favorite strong female character. For this one, I couldn't choose between Meadow of the Murder Complex duology or Katie from the Lux series because both of these girls, basically Meadow is born into the bad situation that was caused by a member of her family that just spent, sent everything spiraling out of control, including her health and love life and her family's health and livelihood, and it's just a mishmash of nothing but blood and death. And then you have Katie, who is thrown into a horrible situation because of love, and she really just can't get out of the majority of it and a lot of bad things happen. Azir slash Vanier. Not sure if I'm saying their names right either. But your favorite book crew. I chose the Mortal Instruments crew. This last one she has on here, I have no clue how to say the name. I'll just put it up on the screen here because I don't know how to say that. I, I really don't know. Um, but favorite sidekick. It has to be a non-human character. And truthfully, I could only think of three off the top of my head. There's Hedwig, which I, I love Hedwig, but I don't really see her as a sidekick. Then there's Khufu from the Kane Chronicles. And then Grover, which technically, not human, he's a satyr. I decided in the end not to go with any of them. And I went with Kuro from Cardcaptors. I'm not 100% sure how to describe Kuro but it's like he can become this gigantic lion, but it's like 99% of the time he's this cute, adorable stuffed animal that eats way, way too much. The first character I added onto her tag is Hell, a character that didn't die a heroic death. The first death that came to mind for me is Octavian's from the Blood of Olympus. He really was just a coward, so he wasn't going to die a heroic death anyways, but the way he died in this book was very quick and kind of anticlimactic. Next up is Finrez, a book that caused you a lot of anxiety. The Elite by Kira Cass. So much frustration and anxiety was felt during this book. I basically sped through the second half of this book as fast as I could, that way I can just finish it. You know, after all the anxiety that I suffered through in this book, I was expecting the third book to be nothing but an anxiety overload, which I already have that as it is, but compared to the first two books, I have felt no anxiety at all. Maybe I've become numb to it, I don't know, but I, this book, I mean, it's just, I wanted to burst into tears from the stress. I might have, actually, and I just blocked it from my mind. Next up is Magnus Chase, a book where a main character dies. It doesn't have to be the main character, but it has to be a main character. For this, I'm going to go with The Game of Lies by James Dashner, the third and final book of the Mortality Doctrine series. And truthfully, when you get to the end, I'm not sure if the death is considered a full death or not, because the virtual world is... You know, forget it. it. I'm just gonna hurt my brain trying to decide whether the death that happens in this book can... It is a death, but it's not an eternal death? That makes any sense at all? I, I don't know. I have a headache. Next is Sam, a book with an arranged marriage. The only book I could think of with an arranged marriage besides Magnus Chase series, because of Sam, 
um, was the Kiss of Deception because I know there is a arranged marriage in there. I haven't read that book series yet, so I didn't feel comfortable counting that for this question. Then we have Hearth and Blitz. Favorite LGBTQ couple or non-canon couple? And I add the non-canon part because I'm not really sure if Hearth and Blitzen are going to be canon or not. May not even learn if they are or not at the end of the third book. That may just be left up in the air, either that or it's so eluded to that Rick Riordan doesn't feel like he needs to just come out and say it. So, besides the dozens of anime couples that I would ship together, I have Nico and Will from the Percy Jackson series. Of course, Hearth and Blitz, canon or not. Kit and Ty from the Dark Artifices. Again, not sure that's going to be canon, but I'm holding out hope it's going to be. Alec and Magnus, of course. And then Finn and Matt from the Blackwell pages. And Finn and Matt are 100% not canon. But in my dreams they are, because I shipped them from book one, and I don't care how the series ended, they're, still, they're together. Next up is Jack. If you don't remember who Jack is, it's Magnus's talking, self-fighting sword. What is your favorite magical weapon? And even though it's kind of generic and I really didn't want to say wand, I have to go with wand. Mainly because there are so many possibilities, whereas unless you get lucky and you get a talking sword or a pin sword like Percy's or a Stele to write tattoos, okay, hey, a Stele would actually be very, very cool. And Seraph Blades. But think real world wise without having to have like specific monsters that you can kill with these things i think a wand would just be more useful both in an attack situation and just normal life last but not least alex a character that keeps you guessing and i thought so so hard on this one because no one has kept me guessing as much as alex has and i didn't want to say her him. Whichever one they decide to be at the time. But ultimately, I decided to go with Wanda from The Host. I just remember reading this book for the first time and I kind of put myself mentally in that same situation. And I tell you, I cried so much that it's not, that was not my best idea to do that. But it had me questioning all the decisions she was making and she also did a whole lot of surprising stuff considering the way they treated her. So she kept me guessing, but in a really good way. And that is the end of this tag. I feel like I kind of rushed through it a bit, but I have been recording for like 40 minutes. So maybe I talked more than I thought. I don't know. I hope I can edit this down to like 10 minutes at least. I'm gonna do something different for tagging this time around. And I'm going to tag everyone who doesn't make YouTube videos. Which means that to do this tag, you have to do it in the comments. Or you can even go to Kira's library and do the tag on her blog. But with that, that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!